So I want to take the other side of the argument and say why you must use OKRs in your reward system. I apologize, this is going to be a bit of a longer video, but it's, it's, it's worth it. Uh, invest the time. So there's basically, education-wise, two types of reward systems. Extrinsic, so rewards you get from the outside world. And intrinsic, rewards you give yourself. And so intrinsic, think of playing a sport or a musical instrument, singing in a choir. You do that not because you're going to become a professional athlete or a professional musician. You do it because it makes you feel better. Those are intrinsic rewards, rewards you give yourself for uh, feeling good about a job well done. So extrinsic are obviously things like direct financial compensation, things like indirect financial compensation, like, uh, you know, education uh, bonuses, uh, extended leaves, vacations, benefits, uh, retirement plans, that kind of thing. And then non-financial compensation, like a better cubicle, career development opportunities, and so on. Those are all given to you from people outside based on their feelings about what they want to give you. Intrinsic, what you give yourself. I'm going to rely on the work from uh, Daniel Pink. Daniel Pink describes five, or, uh, yeah, five intrinsic rewards, things that inspire us. And these intrinsic rewards work if you look at this in context of why you play a sport, why you do online gaming, or what you get out of your job. So intrinsic rewards, these five categories are, one, people want to feel connected to purpose, right? So if I'm playing an online game, I understand what the purpose is. At work, I want to feel connected to the purpose and feel that, you know, my organization is making a difference to society, the environment, uh, people's lives. Secondly, learning. I want to make sure that I develop while I'm at work and grow. And so here's an interesting statistic. A, a recent survey indicates about why people leave jobs. And the thing is, 87% of people leave jobs not because of pay, but because they don't feel that their work is linked to the purpose of the organization or the purpose is, is worth my time, or I'm not getting the personal growth out of my career. That only leaves 13% to be related to pay and other things. So these first two intrinsic rewards are what's causing this uh, great resignation and, and what causes employee engagement and, and so forth, depending whether you look at it as the glass, glass being half full or half empty. So the other three intrinsic rewards um, are uh, about progress. I need to see that ongoing progress. And we don't get that often at work. Like let's say I'm in the accounting system, I, I'm doing invoicing. How do I know day in, day out that I'm doing a great job? But you know, I can see, I don't know, the number of if OKRs are in place, the number of invoices, or maybe I notice, hey, I did an invoice now with two different currencies in it or two different due dates or something like that. So I can begin to see progress through OKRs. Autonomy, because OKRs are stated on outcomes, not activities, I get autonomy. So long as I achieve my objective and live within our values, uh, regulations, and our guidelines, I, I'm autonomous. I can make my own decisions. And finally, the social connections, the uh, ability to work as a team, right? Think of any team sport, soccer. The, the forwards are always yelling and talking back to the midfields. They're always yelling and talking back to defense and, and the goalkeeper and so on. So the idea of those social connections in online gaming, there's more uh, internet chatter about online games than any other topic. Uh, in sports or at work. So let's sort of call these down. These are the major elements that we need in our reward system, both the extrinsic and intrinsic. And if I were to do a comparison, if I were to say, given this criteria, let's take a look at the traditional compensation system and what would happen when I link it to OKRs. So your traditional compensation system does a great job of underpinning financial compensation and that indirect compensation. And depending how it's structured, it can support the non-financial compensation as well. It's a stack deck. If I take a look at what OKRs provide us, it's a whole thing, right? Both the traditional compensation framework in a more substantial way, but also helps the individual and the intrinsic rewards, feeling connected to purpose, seeing that they're learning, seeing the progress they're making, understand they're operating with autonomy, not a job description, but really um, OKRs, accountabilities. And then finally, uh, those social connections. So OKRs offer us what's absolutely necessary in order for us to be successful in that reward system. Let's take a couple looks at the arguments that we've heard about why you should not be connecting. 
Objective number one is people concerned about gaming the numbers. I've got a different video on that, but the net is we just have to educate people so they understand they can't actually game the numbers in an OKR system, but also understand that if I'm gaming the numbers, I'm working to the detriment of the overall team. I might make my personal lot better, but I'm ruining that for the overall team because they've got the wrong data to go by. People are concerned I can't achieve 100%. Well, yeah, there's two possible solutions to that. One is use the best possible goal, not a uh, aspirational stretch goal. And I'll do a different video on that. And secondly, create a fair game so people understand that maybe you're not expected to achieve 100%. Like in Google, 70% is fine. So long as that's part of the rule, it makes it a fair game and will work. People are concerned that OKRs can create a competitive environment. Well, of course they can. If I set them at the individual level, so let's make sure that we set the team level. But secondly, you can also set the intensity level. What we find is in marketing teams, they actually want collaboration. And so that is set up with no intensity. It's all about collaboration. Whereas sales teams often want that competitive environment. They want leaderboards and competitions and so on. So you can set your own intensity level of the OKRs inside of a team, inside of a department, or across the whole organization. I touched on this before. We're concerned that OKRs might incent people to cut corners. We saw that by obviously having linked O's and KRs. So if I were to do something to cheat the system, it's obviously at the expense of some other department. If it's a shared objective or shared KR, I can't be cheating the other part because we're linked together. But also let's have some 360s. Let's, let's do a more effective evaluation to make sure people are not cutting corners or cheating on the values. And then finally, uh, that we're concerned that it might cause people to work as uh, solo, not as a team. Well, obviously, let's just structure the OKRs to be team-centric. You might still want some individual, but we need to have those team ones as well so that we encourage people to work as a team. And we'll talk about that in follow-up videos. So hopefully this allows you to understand how that structure should be working with OKRs.